Good morning, everyone. Good morning, and God bless you. And I thank you for coming on this morning. God is good. Hallelujah. We see yet another morning. His mercies are new every morning. And we thank the Lord for that. Amen. He didn't have to rise us up this morning, but he did. We have another day to tell somebody about Jesus. Not just to live your day blankly, but to tell somebody how they can be saved from sin, hell, and death. Amen. And that is an honor to be able to do that, even for the kingdom of heaven, to be able to do anything for the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. I hope that you're blessed. I pray that you've been blessed and that the Lord has been sending his angels out to guide you and to guard you. And the Holy Spirit has been speaking to your heart and laying things on you. Uh, as I say, remember, keep a tablet or something around you so when the Holy Spirit shows you something, you can write it down. Amen. God speaks in different ways. Hallelujah. He can speak to you in your dreams. Amen. He can speak to you through someone else. He can speak to you through preachers preaching. He can speak to you through music. Amen. So I pray that all is well with you. Um, what I want to do today is um, pray. We'll pray in, and then I want you to, if you're writing notes or whatever, Turn to Ezra in your Bible, and this is about laying your foundation, folks. Lay your foundation. And this was sent to me by the Holy Spirit himself, by God himself. It wasn't me looking for a title or description. (laughs) Amen. So lay your foundation. Ezra, and I'll be reading from chapter 1 to begin with. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we love you, Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, we love you, Jehovah, we love you, Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit of God, we love you. We thank you all for loving us. We thank you for helping us at times of need. We thank you for being our provider, our healer, our righteousness. God, you are our righteousness. You are the banner over us, and your banner is love. The banner over us is love. And we pray, Father God, that you send more people into our lives that we can speak to about Jesus, about what he did on a cross, how he died to keep them from sin, hell, and death. Hallelujah. To forgive us for our sins so we won't go to hell and live for the rest of our lives in burning, torturing fire with the demons who were so evil during our living days. Amen. Father God, I ask the Holy Spirit, use me, use me, and tell us something. Reveal in Jesus' name something that someone listening to this didn't know. Reveal your heavenly wisdom through me, through my voice, the sound of my voice, to those that love you and are listening today. Bless their households, their families, their children, their finances, their health. Bless them. I cover all of you with the blood of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. I'll start with Ezra chapter 1, as I was saying. And it reads like this. It says, now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he's charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah, who is there among you of all his people, his God be with him, and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is the Lord. He is the God, which is in Jerusalem. And whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, let the men of his place help him with the silver and gold and with goods, with beasts, beside the free will offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and the Levites with all them whose spirit God had raised to go up to build the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem. And all they that were about them strengthened their hands and vessels of silver with gold and goods, beasts, and precious things beside all that was willingly offered. Also, Cyrus the king brought forth the vessels of the house of the Lord, 
which Nebuchadnezzar had brought forth out of Jerusalem and had put them in the house of his God. Remember that story? You've ever heard of it? Amen. Even those did Cyrus, king of Persia, bring forth by the hand of Mithridath, the treasurer, and numbered them unto Shezbazar, the prince of Judah. And this is the number of them, 30 charges of gold, a thousand chargers of silver, nine and 20 knives, 30 basins of gold, silver basins, and of a second sort, 410, and other vessels, a thousand. All the vessels of gold and of silver were 5,400. All these did Shezbazar bring up with them of the captivity that were brought up from Babylon unto Jerusalem. Now notice this mentioned how Nebuchadnezzar was a bad king. Nebuchadnezzar took over Israel and took over, so he took everything. He took all of the, the goods out of the, out of the house of God. He, he, he stole all the gold, all the treasure and everything. Now we have a good king. We have Cyrus, uh, in fact, who Daniel, uh, just a few books later, I want to say about 12 books later, I'm getting ahead of myself on my notes, but uh, Daniel served under Cyrus. Daniel served under four kings. Amen. The author of Ezra is uncertain, but is written according to Jewish tradition. Ezra is a recounting of Zerubbabel's rebuilding of the temple and his own return to Jerusalem to take charge. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what this is about. Cyrus, king of Persia, still reigned in Daniel's time. Like I said, about 12 books to the right. (laughs) Amen. Daniel was so honest and good and needed and wise that he served under four kings. Imagine his age. God kept him to good old age. Amen. Don't you want God to do that for you as well? Amen. No premature death here in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Cyrus the Great was the founder of the Achaemenid Empire and king of Persia from 559 to 530 B.C. He is venerated in the Hebrew Bible as Cyrus the Messiah for conquering and liberating the Jews from captivity. He pierced his empire together using a mixture of conquest and diplomacy attesting to his skills as a warrior and a statesman. A largely tolerant and merciful ruler, he established one of the largest empires in world history, Cyrus, the largest empire kingdom in world history. Even his name means throne. In Isaiah, God chooses Cyrus, quote, to subdue nations before him and to strip kings of their armor so that you may know that I am the Lord God, the God of Israel, end quote. Amen. God used this king. Amen. Just like he can use are other leaders around the world today if they allow him, if they allow him to, amen? But a lot of them act like they're ashamed of the Lord, and God says, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you, amen? So let's pray for our leaders. Let's pray for the countries that we live in, amen? And I see people from around different parts of the countries on, so let's pray not just for the United States where we live, most of us live, but other countries as well. Pray for our leaders, amen? Cyrus freed the Jews from captivity and helped them rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. This is proof that God can use a righteous person, not just any person. God can use a righteous person in power to free you from whatever ails you. Well, God could use anybody, but Cyrus was a righteous person. He liked to do things right. He was a good king. Amen. He wanted to help Israel, which actually should have been his enemy. (laughs) <laughs> but, you know, he, he was just a good man. Amen. God can use a righteous person to free you. And in chapter 3, let's go to chapter 3. Turn to Ezra chapter 3. Amen. 
And it says, and when the seventh month was come and the children of Israel were in the cities, the people gathered themselves together as one man to Jerusalem. Then stood up Yeshua, notice Jesus, Yeshua, Joshua. They all mean the same thing, amen? Remember, they didn't have J's, so this would have been Yeshua, amen? Yeshua, the son of Josedach, and his brethren, the priests, and Zerubbabel, the son of Sheatil, and his brethren, and builded the altar of the God of Israel to offer burnt offerings thereon, as it is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. Amen. And they set the altar upon his bases, for fear was upon them because of the people of those countries. And they offered burnt offerings thereon unto the Lord, and even burnt offerings morning and evening. They kept it going. They never stopped. They gave offerings to God. Hallelujah. And he deserves them as well. They kept also the Feast of the Tabernacles, as it is written, which we know is a certain time of year, and offered the daily burnt offerings by number, according to the custom as the duty of every day, every day required. And afterward, offered the continual burnt offering. They continued to do so both of the new moons and of all the set feasts of the Lord that were consecrated and of everyone that willingly offered a free will offering unto the Lord. See, they continued to do what they had been doing for years before Cyrus even took over. They, when, when you find yourself captive to something or someone Continue to praise the Lord. Continue to lay your foundation. Don't let anybody stop you from doing what you have been taught by God to do. Amen. From the first day of the seventh month began they to offer burnt offerings unto the Lord, but the foundation of the temple of the Lord was not yet laid. They gave money also unto the masons and to the carpenters and meat and drink and oil unto them of Zidon, to them of Tyre, to bring cedar trees from Lebanon to the Sea of Joppa, according to the grant that they had of Cyrus, king of Persia. They paid people to help them. They paid each, each category of people that they needed to get this job done. Today, would you say that people are, are actually um, giving offerings uh, to people who know how <laughs> to get the job done. Not as much, not as much. And, and it seems like the more the devil takes over this world, the less people enjoy or want to help anybody. Israel kept the Feast of Tabernacles and, act, tabernacle and offered a continual burnt offering. Amen. Yeshua built the, uh, the altar and had burnt offerings. Now, look in verse 10. Okay, verse 10. Amen. And it says, and when the builders laid the foundation of the temple, which I hope y'all do, amen, don't stop, of the Lord, they set the priests in their apparel with trumpets and the Levites and the sons of Asaph with cymbals, which is where we may have gotten Asaph's uh, stories or whatever it's called, amen. Um, to praise the Lord after the ordinance of David, king of Israel. Watch this. And they sang together by course in praising and giving thanks unto the Lord, because he is good for his mercy endures forever toward Israel. Just like God is merciful and his goodness is good towards you. Amen. Being a child of the Most High God. And if you're not, I, uh, accept Jesus Christ now. Amen and become favored of the Lord. And all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord because the foundation of the house was laid. Amen. When the builders laid the foundation, y'all, they set priests in their apparel with trumpets. Now, the trumpets are actually blows of victory. And every time you blow the trumpet, enemies flee. Amen. When you blow the trumpet, it's a sound of victory. Hallelujah. It is definitely not a sound of sadness or oppression or depression. And the reason a lot of people go through sadness and oppression and depression is because they refuse. They are not blowing the trumpets the way they should. You're, you know, the, the main word 
that is used for the blowing of trumpets, which they yell, they scream it out as loud as they can. And you need to start doing this as well is hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And every time you say hallelujah, demons can't stand that word. They flee. And not enough people are screaming hallelujah today. Blow your trumpet of victory. Be a Levite. The Levites were the singers. Amen. Can you still continue on with your foundation newly laid and still praise the Lord? Are you praising the Lord? Okay, you're laying, I'm telling you today, let continue. If you're laying your foundation, I pray to God you are. Lay your foundation, scream hallelujah. Don't be afraid somebody's going to hear you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Once you start learning and getting your mind made up about your relationship with the Lord, keep building. You'll feel it. You'll Feel it in your spirit. The Holy Spirit will guide you as to what to do next. Listen to him. Learn the cues of the Holy Spirit. Learn his voice. Learn how you feel when he's around, when he, when he comes, comes up around you. Amen. Don't stop. Don't look to the right. Don't look to the left. Plow ahead. Too many indecisive people. God show me this word, indecisive, for two days now. Too many indecisive people nowadays, there's double-minded people, there's unstable people, they can't be trusted with anything, amen, hallelujah, but we need to take away the double-minded, must become single-minded, amen, to go from unstable to stable, let God see that you're serious about building this foundation. And now there's a lot of people say they're going to build a foundation, but they don't call in the, the concrete makers and, and the, 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 the gold and, and, and everything and the Levites and the singers. And, you know, they just, they just say, well, you know, I'm, I'm working on it. Mm-hmm, I'm working on it. You're working on it, but where is it at? Amen. Where's your, who are you? Where's your foundation? Amen. No, not just talk, you know, you got to show that, that you are building your foundation. People don't know if you're, you're a child of God, if you don't let them know you're a child of God. People, you know why a lot of people get taken over by evil? Because first of all, they think that they can hide their place in the body of Christ. They think they can hide. Well, we could play the world. And we could play uh, the role of a Christian, too. We could do both. Double-minded. Amen. Hallelujah. They have too much world in them. And people that have too much world in them, you can see it. You can feel it. You can hear it when they open up their mouth. You can see it by the decisions that they make. And the problem with that is, they cannot tame their minds. They don't know how to tame their minds or they don't want to. They just don't want to do that good godly thing. You can't hold hands with the devil and call yourself a Christian. You know what? People are getting away with it today. It's so easy. And what's happening is it's drawing other people in. Other people are doing it. They're trying to hold hands with Jesus and hold hands with the devil at the same time because so-and-so got away with it. It's been 40 years, 50 years, 200 years. They, they got away with it, so we can get away with it too. And I'm telling you, if Jesus came back right now, they would not make it. Make up your mind. And here is your foundation. Are you ready for this? I'm going to tell you what your foundation is. Start working on it if you haven't. Amen. Prayer. Fasting. Giving. And the word, all four of those make a square, a foundation. That is your foundation. You can fast all you want to, okay? But if you're not praying properly, if you're not praying to the Lord, giving him some time, that fasting is not going to do nothing but help you to lose weight. Amen? People give. All right, okay. Here's another example. People give. Okay, there's people who pride themselves on how they give, you know, but are they praying? They don't pray. 
or, or they're not praying to God. They're not praying properly to the creator of all things. They're praying to everything but Jesus. People go to church and don't have a relationship with Jesus. Got to be careful of that. Amen? And fasting. Once in a while you fast. There's different types of fasting. Amen? There's solid fast, meat fast, water fast, you know? And there's different ways. And you could fast partial, part day. You could fast full. You could fast for days, weeks, whatever you want to do. Amen. Fast. <clears throat> Hallelujah. When you put your body in check while you're fasting, you get your answers quicker because you are allowing the spirit to take over the body. You're, allow, you're telling that body you don't have no, how do you say, you don't have no, um, <laughs> I can't think of how it goes. You can't tell me what to do. You're not the boss of me. Let your body know it is not the boss of you. Amen. And the word. Read, not just read the word. People make reading the word magical. Reading the word is not magical. Reading the word is getting in contact with God, listening. Read the directions you're reading. He gave us the directions. Amen. Read the word. You know, some people say, well, I read the word, I read the word, and you're like, oh, okay, that's good, so what did you get out of it? Um, I just, you know, I, I, don't, I, I don't know, but I read it. No. Mm-mm. Did the Holy Spirit show you anything while you were reading it? Um, it no, but, but at least I read the word, right? No. <laughs> read the word, the Holy Spirit. You can't understand what the word is saying. Nobody can't understand what the Bible is saying unless the Holy Spirit reveals it to you, opens it up to you. You can read the word, but do you use all sources to study it? What do you use? Are you just reading it or are you using all the sources you can to study it? All right. Amen. Now, chapter four, watch this. Your building could be hindered, so stay on it on purpose. Amen. Verse one in chapter four says, um, now when, watch this, and this this is what happened to all of us, happened to you too, okay, especially when folks see you're trying to do right, amen, you're doing what you're supposed to do and not doing their bidding, okay? Now when the adversaries, opposers, of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity built the temple unto the Lord God of Israel. Then they came to Zerubbabel and to the chief of the fathers and said unto them, let us build with you. Adversaries get it, are asking them, let us build with you. What you doing? Can we be a part too? <laughs> For we seek your God as you do. And we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Esterden, king of Azor which brought us up hither. But Zerubbabel and Joshua said, uh, and the rest of the chief of the father of Israel said unto them, ye have nothing to do with us to build a house unto our God, but we ourselves together will build unto the Lord God of Israel as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, has commanded us. Amen. Watch it. Verse 4. Then the people of the land weakened the hand. Then the people of the land, your folks, people around you, Friends, people you grew up with, amen, weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building. And they hired counselors. Some people can be so against you, anti you, they'll hire counselors. They'll hire people to frustrate you. It says they hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose. How many of you listening to this, okay, feel frustrated, like you don't know what your purpose is? Somebody came in and paid somebody to take you off your track, amen, to to get you off track. All the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, even until the reign of Darius, king of Persia, amen, the opposers weakened Israel's hands. Amen. They they were they hired somebody to frustrate their per. Who is frustrating your purpose? What and who is getting in your way? Who came out of nowhere to stop you from being free and having your heart's desire? Who's stopping you from what is stopping?
stopping you from having your heart's desire. God wants you to have everything. God wants you to have everything that's good for you, everything good. He's sinning already. You got angels right now battling demons above you because God sent you something good, and the demons are mad. They don't want you to have it. Amen? Folks will hire your opposers. And this happens a lot in our lifetime. You would be surprised of the people that come up to you and talk to you and, hi, hey, how you doing? Yeah, nice to talk to you. You know, hope all's going well. And those people were sent and they know it. And they might sit up in your house and, and drink some drink some coffee with you and eat some nice food and try to get to know you and find out all your business and take everything that they learned back to the person that hired them. And then you're wondering why you have bad luck. You're wondering why things aren't going so good for you. You're wondering why people don't want to be bothered with you. You're wondering why so much death is around you. You're wondering why there's so many bad things going on. Amen. Why you can't seem to get ahead, you put one foot ahead and go back seven. Amen. Because somebody, a a manipulator, that monitoring spirit made friends with you and went back and told all your business. No need. Don't worry about having the telephone beside you in bed at night. So, you know, whatever, whoever's on it can listen to you pray or whatever. This uh, computers, laptop, everything nowadays can listen to you. Amen. You could have somebody in your life that's like almost writing a book about you, but not for a good purpose. Amen? The same happened also in the book of Nehemiah. You go on YouTube and look up my page, and you'll see that I I think it was called Build Your Wall. Yeah, I did Build Your Wall, parts one through six. They're like 10 minutes each. Build Your Wall, Nehemiah. And then I think I did another version, too, the whole whole thing full. Um, Israel had Sanballat. And Tobiah then, let's go to um, Nehemiah 4, 8. Nehemiah, one book over. Nehemiah uh, chapter 4, verse 8. Watch this. Uh, 7. But it came to, no, 6. So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. See, you have to have a mind to do this. You have to have a mind to lay your foundation. You have to have a mind to serve the Lord. But it came to pass that when Sambalot and Tobiah, (laughs) everybody got a Sambalot and a Tobiah, and the Arabians and the Ammonites and Ashtodites and all the ites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up, they were made up, and that the breaches began to be stopped, then they were very wroth. They were angry. People will get mad because you're trying to relive your life. People are going to get mad because you're trying to rebuild. They don't, the devil don't want you to rebuild. The dim demons don't, that were sent your way, they don't want to see you do good. Satan don't know how to like. He doesn't know how to love. <laughs> He doesn't want to see you do better than him in anything. He will send a cosmic joker, I call him, into your life in some kind of way. And then they get mad when they see you're doing good. Do you ever see anybody that gets mad when you're doing good and then they get happy when something bad happens to you? I guess who that is. That's your Sanballat and your Tobiah. And don't forget this is Nehemiah now, right? It says, and conspired all of them together to come and to fight against you. Uh, Okay, uh, sorry. Fight against Jerusalem (laughs) and to hinder you and to hinder it. Amen. uh, Your opposers will come. They will try. They don't want you doing good. So don't think that everything, as soon as you get something on your mind or God shows you something in your life and you think everything's fluffy and everything's fine, don't you believe that? It says, nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. And they prayed. Watchfulness. Amen. When, you, when something wakes you up three or four o'clock in the morning, pray. Then you go back to sleep. Amen. And Judah said, the strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed, and there is much rubbish so that we are not able to build the wall. And our adversary said, they shall not know, neither see, till we come in the midst among them and slay them and cause the work to cease. Your enemies want to stop you. They will kill the project. Your adversaries seek to slay you. And it came to pass that when the Jews which dwelt by them uh, came, they sent unto us ten times, 
from all the places when she return, you, sh- you shall return unto us, they will be upon you. Wherever you go, you're going to have adversaries. Wherever you go, you're going to have opposers. Amen? Therefore, set I in the low, lower places behind the wall and on the higher places. I even set the people after their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. See, the church got together. Hallelujah. The church got together. The families sat in different places around the wall to get this wall built. Is your family strong enough to, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, there it is. Is your family strong enough to help you to build a wall? Or are there people, do you have weak links in your family that's not walking in your footsteps? Do you have weak links in your family that doesn't believe a word you say or they want to continue to call you a liar every time you open up your mouth or they just don't believe? that you have a close relationship with the Lord? Are you part of the families that sit around the wall to build the wall? Amen. And I looked up, verse 14, and I looked up and I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, be ye not afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible and fight for your brethren, your sons, fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives and your houses. Fight for them. Amen. This is, fight for them. Don't just give them up. Fight for them. If you have to pray about your son, your daughter, your grandmother, grandfather, mom, dad, whoever, sister, brother, pray for them. If you have to pray for 13 years. I had a lady follow me around on the Internet harassing me for literally 13 years. And I prayed for her all those years. But sure enough, she she got sick though. It had, um, she got sick and and passed away. But I prayed for her. Amen. And it came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto us, and God had brought their counsel to nothing, that that we returned all of us to the wall, every one to his work. Okay, watch this. <laughs> when it got around that y'all was doing good. Everybody's listening to this, okay? They're going to find, your enemies are going to find out. You're st- they're still doing good. How did they get over? How did they do that? And we had, we had them in a the bag. How did they get out of that? Verse 15, Nehemiah 4.15. It says, and it came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known to us and God had brought the counsel of nothing that we returned all of us, about every man to his work. And it came to pass, for, and it came to pass me, then sure enough, it happened. Amen. Uh, from that time forth, that the half of my servants wrought in the work, and the other half of them held both the spears and the shields and the bows and the habergeons, and the rulers were behind all the house of Judah. Yeah, the half worked, <laughs> amen, and half watched. Do you have somebody to watch with you while you work? Two by two. And verse 17, it says, they which build it on the wall, and they that bear burdens with those that laid it, every one with one of his hands wrought in the work, and with the other hand held a weapon. They all took turns. They were, listen, sometimes you have to confound your enemies. Amen. Don't stop letting your enemies confound you. Sometimes you have to confound your enemies. They had to build with one hand and hold a weapon in the other. Your weapon as you, as you build your foundation is Jesus and the word and his blood. Plead the blood of Jesus over yourself, your ministry, your family, your house, your health, your job, your finances, your vehicles, and whatever else the enemy can try to come up against. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And I end it with Isaiah 54, 17. I love this. Isaiah 54, 17. God said, no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. And every tongue that shall rise up against you in judgment, you will condemn. You will condemn. You don't have to wait for the great white throne judgment to condemn your enemies. If they're wrong, they're wrong. Don't make right wrong. Don't make wrong right. Amen. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Are you saved? 
Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior? Amen. If you haven't, I want you to do this. Some people say, oh, that's no, that's not how it goes. Well, some people say just, you know, uh, ask God to forgive you of your sins and, and, and uh, tell him you love him. No. You ask God, listen, say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I believe you died on a cross and rose three days again. Three days. I accept you as my Savior. Thank you for loving me, and I love you. Teach me your ways. Thank you, Jesus, and amen. Amen, hallelujah. And if you said that, welcome to the family of God. God bless you. Romans 10, read it. When you get a chance, read Romans 10, circle it, make it yellow, pink, whatever color you want to make it, Romans 10, and go find a Bible-believing, tongue-talking church. Amen. As I always say, not a tongue-babbling church, but somebody's going to teach you how to use your secret weapon. <laughs> Hallelujah. Your, your secret language. Nobody knows that language. Nobody knows God's language like that but the Holy Spirit, and he will show it to you. He, he will use you to speak to God. Amen. That's one phone call that no monitoring spirit can intercept. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. God said he, threw, he just threw your sins as far as the east is from the west and forgot it, so you forget it too. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. May God give you his peace, his mercy, his grace, abundance, love. Hallelujah. All good things from the Father of light be unto you. Reverend Essie signing off. And to God be the glory for the things he has done. I love you. Have a wonderful day.